If you'd like to be notified when the next video is available, if you will text the word Bible to the number below, we will let you know when that video is available. Hey folks, welcome to our teaching video. Now for the past couple of weeks, we've been looking at the subject of church attendance, uh, but I thought I would kind of change a little bit today and, and, and focus on a different subject. And so I'd like to talk to you today about the truth regarding baptism. Now, there are a lot of different opinions when it comes to the issue of baptism, especially when it comes to the form of baptism as well as the purpose of baptism. So over the next uh, couple of weeks, I'd like to look at those two subcategories. So today, let's talk a little bit about the form of baptism. When you use the word baptism today, uh, people think of different things. Some folks think of sprinkling, some think of pouring, some think of immersion or what they might say getting dunked. Uh, the, the question is, is, is there one particular form that the scriptures talk about? Now keep in mind that our standard of truth is the word of God. And the fact is, uh, there is only one form of baptism taught in scripture, and that is immersion. So let me explain. In the original language of the Bible, which is Greek, every time that the word immersion or baptism, I'm sorry, every time the word baptism is used, it is the Greek word for immersion or to submerse or to put completely under. Now, the interesting thing is, is that the Greek language does have words for pouring and sprinkling, and they are used in the New Testament, but never in regards to baptism. So example, when Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them, he used the word immersion. Always the word immersion is used in reference to baptism in the scriptures. It's also interesting that in the conversion accounts, the, the text itself gives indication that immersion is what was practiced. So we're told that John baptized at a certain part in the Jordan because there was much water, indicating that the form of baptism was immersion. And when Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, we're told that they both went down into the water and came up out of the water, indicating again uh, the practice of immersion. And Paul said that we are baptized into the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's only one form of baptism that paints that picture, and it's immersion. The fact of the matter is, folks, the evidence is overwhelming that the only form of baptism practiced by the first century church and taught in Scripture is immersion. And there's really not a lot of debate about that. In fact, uh, most scholars, if not all scholars, agree with that statement. Let me share with you, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to kind of reach over and grab these quotes. Let me share with you a couple quotes uh, that indicate that truth. John Calvin from the Presbyterian Church said, the word baptize signifies to immerse. It is certain that immersion was the practice of the primitive church. John Wesley said, buried with him in baptism, alluding to the ancient manner of baptizing by immersion. Again, the evidence is just overwhelming that the only form of baptism taught in Scripture is immersion. So the question comes within, why do some churches practice something besides immersion? And, and I, I can't speak for other churches. I think sometimes we see other forms used because of convenience or because of a misunderstanding of the purpose of baptism, which we'll talk about next week. But the fact is, it's concerning. It's something we need to be very careful about. And the reason is, is because we know that one of the characteristics of God is that when he gives instructions, he gives them in detailed form, and he expects for us to keep them. So example, God told Noah, no, I want you to build a boat. And here are the dimensions of the boat. And I also want you to use this type of wood. Now, could you imagine if Noah comes back to God and says, hey, God, look, I know you want this kind of wood used, but, but I have to go so far to get that wood, and there's some really good wood around here. It would be a lot easier for me, a lot more convenient if I could just use that type of wood. Could you imagine God going, oh, Noah, I didn't even think about that. Sure, that wood's good. No. And the reason is, is because everything that God told Noah to do, from the dimensions down to the type of wood, was for a purpose. God had a reason for it. And so, folks, I think we have to be very careful when we change what God has instructed us for our convenience, 
or for what we want. I think we begin to walk on very thin ice when we do that. And the truth is that the only form of baptism taught and practiced in Scripture is immersion. Thank you, folks. I hope to see you next week.